This Ridley-O sponsored by Facebook.com slash groups slash anti-war New England slash anti -war. Jason Soren's Free State Project idea was a brilliant strategic concept. But when we ask ourselves how well it's working out, I think maybe we should ask the master of strategy, Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu's concepts of military conflict are meant to be able to predict who will win and who will lose a war. That can also be applied to some extent in a political conflict, since, I think as uh, Bismarck or somebody along that, those lines once said, um, uh, politics is just war by another means. I may have that backwards, and I may have the wrong person in mind when I quote, but that's the basic idea. In determining who will win a conflict, Sun Tzu said, quote, which of the two sovereigns is imbued with the moral law? Which of the two generals has the most ability? With whom lie the advantages derived from heaven and earth? On which side is discipline most rigorously enforced? Which army is stronger? On which side are officers and men more highly trained? In which army is there the greater constancy both in reward and punishment? Let's go through them one by one and see which ones we have on our side as free staters. Number one, which of the two sovereigns is imbued with the moral law? Well, depending on how you define moral law, I would say that we're closer to having that than the government and the cops are. <clears throat> they have to pay their people to do what they do, and our people are volunteers. So they really believe in something, an idea, and they have ethics on their side specifically the ethic of not using force to collect their sustenance, or at least not initiating it. So number one goes to us. Number two, which of the two generals has the most ability? Well, we don't really have two generals fighting it out here. If you were to name the most important free stater in New Hampshire and the most important authoritarian in New Hampshire, I guess we'd say Ian Bernard, Ian Freeman of Free Talk Live is the most important free stater, and maybe Maggie Hassan? the governor would be the most important authoritarian, although she's not awful. I'm going to call that a draw. I think they both have a great deal of ability. She, however, has more ability at winning over uh, the New Hampshire population. So maybe that number two should go to the government. Number three, with whom lie the advantages derived from heaven and earth? When Sun Tzu refers to heaven and earth, he's referring to distances, great and small, temperatures, uh, geographic consideration, that kind of thing. Well, free staters picked the location, and they picked it well. N many of the natural factors worked to their advantage. The cold temperatures tend to drive away the welfare recipients who create big government. The temperatures drive down crime, which creates big government. The state is properly situated for our agenda with a seaport of sorts and a Canadian border. And... Uh, it has a long history of uh, thinking a bit like we do. So, number three goes to the Free Staters. Number four, on which side is discipline most rigorously enforced? Well, that, that would probably have to go to the government. Number five, which army is stronger? Well, obviously, that would go to the government. We don't really even have an army. But I guess if you look at the two different political infrastructures, the Free State political infrastructure is pretty strong. Uh... But the demo publicans uh, probably have a stronger one, and they do have uh, an army of sorts on their side in the form of uh, police forces. Something, this sort of thing could change, though, in the next few years as the number of free staters is larger. So uh, for now, it goes to the government. Later, it could go to us. Number six, on which side are officers and men more highly trained? I think I should probably give that to the government, but... Uh, it's important to remember that people in the Free State Project are all trained in something, usually in the private sector, and they usually apply those skills, to some extent, toward their activism. So I'm not even sure I can rate that one. Maybe I should call that a draw. Number seven, the final one. In which army is there a greater constancy, both in reward and punishment? Ah, well... I don't know. I mean, uh, let's say, uh, let's take an example of stealing. Let's say a person who's a free stater steals from the Free State Project treasury. 
or uh, conversely a person who works for say the state troopers steals from the state troopers treasury would free staters be more constant in their application of punishment or would governments be more constant consistent I don't know I, I, I think that might be a draw there's certainly probably not as much process and procedure set in place for punishing a free stater on the other hand it's pretty obvious that they would be you know they would be sort of expelled from the movement and they would probably leave the state this would happen almost every time I don't know I think I'm gonna give this one to the free staters because there really is not very good constancy in reward and punishment for the government so you think about it there was a time when the government stole a phone from Ian Freeman briefly they weren't punished uh, government does all kinds of crazy things to people uh, in even in New Hampshire <clears throat> for which it is not punished um, on the other hand it can issue just really wild punishments to the people for doing very small things so there's not really much constancy there I think the free staters have more because it's pretty predictable what will happen if a free stater misbehaves it's usually an ostracization process followed by leaving the state or maybe uh, being left to shift for themselves in front of the state government so we win that and uh, that makes the totals sort of a, a draw we, we won three of these and the government is won three and then there's a, uh, a draw I guess in there so to make a Sun Susian prediction as to who will win this conflict uh, two more things need to be done I need to rate the importance of each issue in the context of a political conflict like this and I also need to evaluate the degree of each win and factor in the fact that we're talking about a political conflict in in, in, in other words some of these items may just not be so applicable I guess I should also factor in the fact that uh, well now we're looking we're looking at this from Sun Tzu's point of view I'm almost more of a Sun Tzu guy than Sun Tzu so I think like where Sun Tzu would advocate doing certain decentralizing things and formless things and unpredictable things I might act, advocate that even more than he does so we, that we'll have to factor in later right now let's just look at it from Sun Tzu's perspective I'm gonna write all this down if you look at the video description you'll see it in writing which may be easier to absorb it but for those of you who are just listening let's go back to number one which of the two sirens is imbued with the moral law I considered that to be very important on a scale of one to ten I gave it a rating of eight uh, and the degree of win that the free staters get on this one issue is also an eight on a scale of one to ten now I'm gonna go through all seven of these and add numbers to them I probably shouldn't detail that in 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 speech because it'd be too hard to listen to um, but I, I went ahead and added up the numbers and you know basically I, I rated the the, the the ability of the generals as being sort of a five on a scale of one to ten in importance um, heaven and earth geography I gave it an eight discipline I gave it a four strength of army I gave it a six training a seven constancy a seven that's how important or unimportant I thought these things were in the in the context of a political conflict I judged that the free staters had uh, a strong win on uh, or I'm sorry I judged that the government had a weak win on number two the, the which of the generals had a most the most ability they have uh, they're doing a little better I think than us right now um, on number three uh, the geography issue I thought our win there was a seven I think we're really doing well on geography and heaven and earth you know type things uh, discipline I rated the government's win there uh, as being a six uh, strength of army the government won by a factor of seven I thought not a factor of seven but by seven on a scale of one to ten uh, which side has better training I called that a draw uh, and in uh, uh, constancy our win I'm gonna call that a th I'm gonna call our win a four on that uh, four on a scale of one to ten so let's add all the numbers up and see who's winning this conflict okay well this is kind of surprising when I added up all those numbers I came up with a free state score of 14.6 and a government score of 7.6 so we're beating them uh, by almost a factor of uh, two so 
I guess I can predict a free state victory, free stater victory. Uh, of course, I probably at some point needed to find victory conditions. <laughs> I should have done that toward the beginning. But you know, a few years ago, I would have defined victory conditions as you know dropping the size of government by five or six percent. Uh, you know, uh, you know, around 2010 or 2011. And of course, free staters have already outdone that. So I don't know. Maybe my can. Maybe my victory conditions are too modest. Uh, and, of course, the, the Free Staters did in their opening. Uh, they, they do have, you know, their website back in 2001 and ever since has listed a victory condition of sorts. Um, a government that limits itself to the protection of life, liberty, and property. Or I think another way people have put it is a downsizing of government by a factor of two-thirds. So that's a much taller order. And of course, we'll never 100% be at the victory condition initially listed of a government that completely limits itself to, you know, defending people. There will always be, you know, even if even if the government's doing it 99.9% .9 of the time, what we want to, there'll always be missteps or accidents or uh, <clears throat> abuses by rogue government people. So that victory condition is technically never achievable. I'm not sure we should even use that. But the two-thirds number, I like that because that's something that you can really grasp and it does leave room for maneuver in terms of the, you know, the government would still exist in bits and pieces. You're not shooting for 100% of anything. And of course, there's no such thing as 100% outside of science, basically. Anyway, some encouraging news from Sun Tzu about the Free State Project. I may have some other thoughts uh, from him later, however, if this video does well. This Ridleyo sponsored by Facebook.com slash groups slash anti-war New England slash or maybe it would be better if you just clicked on the link in the video description. Anyway, there you can share liberty perspectives on USA foreign policy. And you can learn about their booth at the upcoming Liberty Forum. Dot com slash groups slash and you get the point.